I don't know how good of a connection I've got here, uh, so I don't know if you can hear me. But uh, Uh, so, so welcome, Fredo. Pleasure to have you here. 
Uh, hopefully you can hear me because I, I, I'm frozen on my screen, but I uh, appreciate the, the opportunity to meet y'all virtually. I uh, wish I could make it out there, but the weather was uh, not cooperative for me. Uh, but uh, looking forward to at least participating on and off uh, virtually. Uh, and then in your we have uh, second, uh, in the middle there, second in the middle, uh, we have Adam Johnson. Adam Johnson is the executive vice president and principal of NAI. He's been working on a veto for an office. Uh, Adam leads the NAI the office investment sales team. He also handles leasing and more and tenant representation, uh, primarily focused in the south and southwest suburbs. So Adam did this morning. Uh, next, so to my left, we have John Murphy. Uh, John Murphy is the Senior Vice President and Market Manager for PNC Bank. Uh, John leads both the Chicago and Minneapolis office and is responsible for managing a $5 billion portfolio of commercial real estate. Uh, and on an annual basis, he generally oversees originations over $1 billion in production. Uh, John, thank you for joining us. Uh, I see we've got a little bit of this. Uh, after we have uh, the privilege in uh, introducing a friend and panelist this morning, uh, Lisa has more than 30 years of commercial real estate investment sales and that actually uh, placed some experience in Chicago and the general Midwest region. Uh, prior to joining Colliers uh, in 2019, Lisa was a principal of the Ghostly Circle, as well as a senior health center role at the Realty Equity Office in that line. So thank you, Lisa. Uh, last but not least, we have Stephen Weinstock. Uh, Stephen Weinstock is the first vice president and national director of land and redevelopment for Mark and uh, He also runs the storage division and is a regular speaker, commentator, and guest uh, and on this panel and other various media outlets uh, in and around Chicago. So, same thing. I want to start this morning by uh, doing a little bit of a poll because I think a lot of it's about momentum. Uh, everyone asks me, you know, which way are interest rates going? And for the last 15 or 20 years, I've been wrong, uh, at least 15 out of 20 years. So um, I want to see, we've been we're 22 months into a pandemic, a lot of these discussion topics are revolving around a singular risk topic as it relates to investment. We've heard prior people talk about uncertainty as it relates to real estate assets. Thank you. 
I didn't hear all the question, but uh, I'll, I'll attempt to answer what I did hear. Uh, the, what I am seeing in today's environment is clearly we're moving towards the center of the country and away from the coast. Uh, and so you're seeing some of the cap rates compress in the Midwest uh, as a central location and easy distribution point. Uh, so you're seeing the 3PLs locate there. You're seeing a lot of activity from the e-commerce um, uh, locating to the Midwest and Chicago being the you know, point on the map where you want to be if you're in the Midwest is a direct beneficiary and, and as they said on earlier panels um, you're, you're seeing some of the bigger boxes really start to accelerate in, uh, in Chicago and therefore you're seeing cap rates compress. Uh, I don't think you're going to see cap rates move up 
uh, some have speculated with interest rates moving uh, because I, I believe the spreads are still there. They're, they're larger than they need to be. And so I think there's room uh, to hold their, their rates where they're at. Therefore, I think cap rates will continue to stay low. And um, the reason being, you know, it's now being evaluated what that inflation rate's going to look like, what that growth's going to look like. And you're seeing most investors underwriting deals at a 5% rent inflation for a, a short period of time, whether it's two years, three years, but you're, you're seeing them all load that number in there. And, and that is actually, you're seeing it occur. So, you know, that, that goes into that calculation of what does the cap rate need to be is, you know, where do we think rents are going to inflate by? Um, and therefore that correlates to what the, the cap rate needs. So I think you're going to see cap rates continue to remain on the lower end. I don't think they'll go down, but I also don't think they'll go up.
And that's because kids moved home from college, families had to get together, clean up the office, we need to clean up the bedroom. We don't want to get rid of our stuff. We're using self storage in a whole new way, and we're not a part of that stuff. Okay, it's a perfect part of that stuff. And I have some place to put it in, working from home, just to be that room. Let's move from the privacy of all the papers. In the store, you don't buy the store, I like the bottom line. This store is a huge problem. Self storage is very, very So, John, you see a tremendous amount of deal flow coming from multi family industrial retail office. Um, we all know about the colleges here in Chicago. You know, 10 years ago, we were talking about the fiscal issues. Uh, tax is mostly a concern on people trying to invest in property. Um, we obviously had a COVID related concern. Crime, the issue that meeting, especially as it relates to international. What are the markets are you seeing common for developers to look at? As, you, know, you know, before I name the specific markets, just to talk a little bit about the transaction model that you see. It is, it is significant, and right now it is uh, pretty much all asset classes. But you know, for for nine months of 2020 into the first and early part of the second quarter of 2021, you know, the primary opportunities were apartments. And, um, you know, that hasn't slowed down. I think it's everything. Um, it's accelerated a bit. And uh, you know, I agree with the, the comments earlier about the cap rates moving and maybe it has a little bit to go down uh, in, in, uh, in industrial and in, in multifamily, but um, that, that has expanded over the last over the last six months. You know, there's been so there's so much capital uh, to invest in real estate and energy that you know, price, everybody's competing for the same deals. Pricing for deals uh, for multifamily and industrial are, are just have been squeezed. Um, you know, to the point where we, as a, as a bank, need to, you know, look and start start really looking at other property types to try to uh, to try to get some additional yield. And I, I know that the equity is doing the same. Uh, but it, you know, I, I guess if there's been a similar theme. So I, I just want to say, it was an industrial apartment for for a year and a half. And, and now it's opening up to include hospitality, um, some, some retail, some some office repositioning. Uh, but you know the, the markets we were seeing, we, did, we didn't see there wasn't a lot of job transaction activity in Chicago itself. Um, you know, in the last two years, we have started to see some some construction starts over the course of the last six months. Where most of the activity has been uh, has been in, in suburban secondary markets, uh, you know, garden style apartments in, in those markets, and then, you know, industrial markets. Austin, Denver, uh, St. Pete's, uh, Tampa, uh, Nashville, um, you know. It, it starts to smile, I, I know, but, but it has really started to, to move inward. Uh, as you know, I think people have gotten comfortable, have gotten comfortable with the idea of living and working in some sort of location in the secondary market. And, um, it, and, and so that, that's really what we're seeing a lot in those markets. And uh, you know, if it's new product, it's Favorite product types right now. We have, you know, have started to see some of some the other product types, you know, more capital um, willing to get creative to, to, to uh, make some of the deals work. Uh, so, I'm with it, but um, hopefully I covered some one of your questions. Was it Adam? Do you have anything to add to that? Thank you. 
are the municipalities being comfortable in thinking about um, you know, repositioning those assets and maybe lacking?
to Mayor Mike Woods, vaccination requirement, mask, everything else, tells you that people want to be restaurants and not social. I'm an empty nest. I live in I live across from the um, I'm in the middle of I want to be in a restaurant. I have no issue, nor does most people want to go there. Are you ready for the house? So I think there's, there's lots of opportunities. But as you call them disruptors, I do there's no more disruptors. That's the issue. And it's kind of like a resignation. What happens if you all just have to do it? Very interesting. Work. Uh, 
the, the, the criticized assets, the, the foreclosure, and none of them ended up material. Uh, I'm sure it's the same same again, but we, we really I think we taking back. So you know there there has been a heightened focus on sponsorship. Oh, it's interesting. It's, again, different difference from a decade ago. Another difference being that the banks, you know, actually had some discipline in terms of leverage. Uh, you know, some of that initially was regulatory driven, but it, it actually held up for the most part. And so, you know, the difference with the pandemic recession, the Great Recession, has been there's value left in the properties for the equity to protect. And, and uh, because of that, you know, we just didn't see, I know a number of groups that raised funds to check it. Sales and that really happens. So, you know, we, we have seen the business plan pre pandemic hold up throughout the pandemic, uh, today at least. And, and I do think that coupled with, you know, some runoff on, on the balance sheet again across, you know, across the, the banking industry, uh, and, and you put some, some replace that, 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 you're going to see the banks. Uh, Really expand the, the product type, and you know, maybe in the markets, um, they'll, they'll expand that product, but maintain you know the sponsorship. Yesterday about the assets. I don't know how many of you are talking about, but you have political upheaval in 
internationally, um, more so than we have in this year. We're beginning to enter a second year. Look at Ukraine, we got almost a number of those incidents of equipment to be destabilized. I'm not saying the other law changes all the headwinds, but Great. Uh, so we're thank you everyone for uh, those comments. We're about ten minutes left, so I thought I would uh, open it up for any questions. I know there's uh, only a couple of us here, and uh, a couple more on the phone. So uh, anyone has any questions for me? Uh, uh,
part of the reason why I have this right now is Thank <laughs> you. 